Okay, we're going to learn about sig figs or significant figures. Significant figures are the number of digits in a number or measurement that are meaningful. Sig figs are important in order to calculate answers to problems using measurements. Sig figs are used so that when you're performing calculations using measured values, the answer is only as accurate as the measurement used. So basically, you don't have to use sig figs in math because you're using exact values, but in science, you're often using measured values. And measured values have some error in them, so they're only as accurate as the number of significant digits they have. And when you're doing calculations with them, your answer shouldn't be more or less accurate than the measurement that you're using for the calculation. So there's four rules we're going to go over on how to determine the number of significant digits that a number has. So the first rule is all non-zero digits are significant. So anything that's not a zero counts as a significant digit. So here we have one, two, three, three numbers. None of them are zeros, so it's got three significant figures. Uh, the second rule is all zeros between non-zero digits are significant. So this, I like to call these sandwich zeros. So sandwich zeros are zeros in between non-zero digits. So here we have a number that's not a zero, here we have a number that's not a zero, and then we have these two sandwich zeros. The ones in between are significant. So we have one, two, three, four significant figures in this number. Zeros before the first non-zero digit are not significant. So front zeros never count. So this is a zero in the front, it does not count. This is a zero in front, does not count, does not count. And then we have two, nine, and one that are definitely significant because they're not zeros. And then this is a sandwich zero because it's between a two and a nine. This is a sandwich zero because it's between a nine and a one. So here we have one, two, three, four, five digits that are significant. Um, and then zeros after the last non-zero digit may be significant. So sometimes they're significant, sometimes they're not. It depends if the number has a decimal. So if the number has a visible decimal, then the end zeros are significant. So this example, there's clearly a visible decimal right there. So the zeros at the end are significant. Front zeros are never, ever significant, so those are not. And non-zeros are always significant, so that two is significant. So here, one, two, three numbers that are significant. And then in this example, here we have n zeros and there's no visible decimal. There's an invisible decimal right here, but no visible decimal. So these are not significant. But the two is significant, it's not a zero. So this number only has one sig fig. So take a second now, pause the video, and go through these examples here to determine the number of sig figs. So I'll go over the answers now. Make sure you paused it and tried it on your own. Okay, we have all non-zero digits, so one, two, three significant figures here. Here we have this is a non-zero, this is a non-zero, so both of those are significant, and then we have a sandwich zero in between, so three significant digits there. Here, the three is definitely significant, and n zeros are only significant if there's a visible decimal in the number, and there's no visible decimal here, so those are not significant. So this has one sig fig. Here, this isn't the proper way to write it, but there is a visible decimal technically, so that's significant, and the n zeros would also be significant, three sig figs. But this is where this little note comes in. If you want zeros after the last non-zero digit to be significant, you should write the number in scientific notation. For example, if 200 should have three sig figs instead of one, it should be written as 2.00 times 10 to the power of two. So technically this number here should have been written as 3.00 times 10 to the power of two, but that was just sort of a trick question. All right, here we have a front zero. They are never significant, and the rest are all non-zeros. So they are significant. So we have three significant digits here. Front zero, never significant. Non-zeros are always significant. And n zeros are only significant if there's a visible decimal in the number, which there is right there. So that one is significant. We have four sig figs there. Here, again, front zeros are never significant. Non-zeros are always significant. n zeros are significant if there's a visible decimal. 
four sig figs there. Front zeros are never significant. Non zeros are always significant. Sandwich zeros are always significant. And zeros are if there's a decimal in the number. So we have one, two, three, four, five sig figs there. Okay, so now there's some rules if you are doing calculations with sig figs. So there's different rules depending on whether you're adding and subtracting or multiplying and dividing. So when you are adding and subtracting, the answer will have the same number of decimals or places as the digit with the least number of decimals or places. So when you're adding, you're actually not even looking at sig figs. You're just looking at decimals or places. So the least accurate one is the one you're going to go with for your final answer. So here, um, when there's numbers that are after the decimal, these are the easiest ones to do. You just count how many numbers are after the decimal. Whichever one's less is what you go with. So here we have three numbers after the decimal, two numbers after the decimal. So our final answer should have two numbers after the decimal. The way that I do these is I just put the whole number in on my calculator and then I round after. So you can do this on your calculator and you'll get 0 0.145, but we want to only have two numbers after the decimal because our least accurate starting number had two after the decimal. So we want to cut this off right here, and then we use our rounding rules, and remember that if we're cutting off a five or higher, we have to round up. So 0 0.15 would be the answer. Now these ones are a little bit more tricky because you actually have to look at places, not decimals. There's no decimals, no numbers after the decimal. So you check your places. This one is accurate to the ones place. This one's accurate to the tens place. The tens place is less accurate than the ones place. If you're ever unsure, whichever one's further to the left is the less accurate one. So 10 is further to the left than the one. So we still can do this on our calculator um, and get 665. And then we just want to round it so that it's only accurate to the tens place because that's the least accurate number we're starting with. So we need to cut it off here. The problem, okay, so we have a five, we need to round that up, it gives us 67. The problem here is 67 is nowhere close to 665. Your number should always be pretty close. If I told you I was gonna give you $665 and I gave you $67, you probably wouldn't be very happy. So we put a zero in there as a placeholder. Now it's 670, that's a lot closer to 665. So make sure you're including placeholders if necessary. So we have two more examples here. This one again is one that we don't have any decimals to count. So we look at place values. This one is accurate to the tens place because the last non-zero digit is in the tens place. This one is accurate to the hundreds place because the last non-zero digit is in the hundreds place. So then we add these together and you can just um, add the whole number and then round. So the least accurate of these is the hundreds place because it's further to the left. So we only want this one to be accurate to the hundreds place. Ones, tens, hundreds place. So we need to cut the number off here. And since the next digit is a three, we don't round up. So we keep it as four. And then we add two zeros as placeholders so that it's approximately the same value as what we originally had. Here is another one of the easy ones. You count your decimals here, there's numbers after the decimal. So here we have two numbers after the decimal, one number after the decimal, one is less than two. So 6.20 would be our final answer after adding those together. But we only want one number after the decimal, so we're gonna cut it off right there, and it becomes 6.2. All right, so if you're doing multiplication and division, the rules are actually a little bit different. Um, when you're doing multiplication and division, here you actually are working with sig figs. So when multiplying and dividing with sig figs, the answer will always have the same number of sig figs as the number in the question with the least number of sig figs. So here when you're doing these questions, you um, count your number of sig figs up in each of these numbers and then your answer is going to have the same as the least. So here front zeros don't count, so we have five sig figs. Here, front zeros don't count, and zeros do count if there's a decimal, so we have two sig figs. And two is less than five, so our answer should only have two sig figs. But again, I just write the whole answer my calculator gives me, so I punch this in times by this, and it'll give me 0 0.043986. So I just write that whole number, and then I round it. So I want only two sig figs. Well, front zeros don't count, so we're not counting those as sig figs. 
Then we go one, two, cut the number off there. So 0, 0.04, and then we want to round this up to a 4 because it was a 9 that we were cutting up, cutting off. So 0 0.044 would be the answer with the proper number of sig figs. And then here, um, again, I just do it on my calculator, write down what my calculator tells me, 1.3 times 0.3, 0 0.39. Um, and then I count up my sig figs. So this number and zeros count if there's a visible decimal. So three sig figs. Front zeros don't count and zeros do if there's a decimal. So two sig figs. My answer should have two sig figs and it does have two sig figs the way it's written. Now I just want to take a second and show you if this had to have three sig figs, you just add a zero onto the end. Um, same with the number, like if you got 2 as your answer and you wanted it with th 3 sig figs, just go 2.00. Now it has 3 sig figs and it's the same value. Okay, when you're combining, multiplying, and dividing, um, you want to use bed mass. Brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So use your bed mass and then don't round until the end. Make sure you're keeping all your digits and then just at the very end you round them. So I like to keep track of my sig figs just by underlining the number, but I still keep all my digits there. So using my bed mass, I know that I should be multiplying first. So 0 0.31 is just going to stay there. And then on my calculator, I go 4 times 3.6498. And I get 14.5992. And then I just keep track of how many sig figs that number should have. I write the whole number, but I keep track of sig figs. So this number has three sig figs. This number has five sig figs. So this should only have three sig figs. So I don't round it. I just underline the three sig figs. And then I use that same number. I haven't cleared my calculator. I use that full number, not rounded. And then I do my next step and add that 0 0.31 on there. And I write down my whole answer that my calculator gives me. So I got 14.9092. And then now since we're adding, remember we look at decimals or place values. So here are two digits after the decimal. This one has four digits, but only one of them is significant. That's why you have to underline. So two after the decimal, oops, one after the decimal, so we should only have one number after the decimal here. So 14.9 would be the most accurate answer there. Um, now I just have a little note here about infinite sig figs. Most of the calculations we do in class will be using one measurement and then we'll also be using an exact values. And exact values, they have infinite significant figures. So in those situations where you have a measurement and you're multiplying by something that's an exact value or infinite sig figs, then you just go with the number of sig figs in your original measurement. Just basically ignore the other one. And then here, you can just look at this on your own page. There's nothing to do here. Just look um, if you're rounding or if you're not rounding. So when we're not rounding and we're keeping those extra digits, we get 281. But if you round through each step, you end up with 282. So you get the wrong answer. So make sure you're saving your rounding until the very last step, like we did up in this example here. OK, you can work on your significant figures assignment now.